Martins. My name is Michelle. I'm a bird keeper here. And today we wanted to visit our silvery cheek hornbill exhibit because if you've watched a lot of our Zoo Zoo videos, you've probably heard some bird honking in the background. And that's these guys requesting some attention. So we wanted to come visit them today. And they're probably going to be silent the entire time. Now we do have a male and female in here. And their native habitats are found over in East Africa, all the way from Ethiopia down to South Africa. And they do reside in the very tall evergreen forest. And us in here, we do have our male up at the front showing off that beautiful ornament on his head. That is called a cast. So all hornbills do have that cast, and that's a way with these two to actually tell males they're a little hung there to tell males and females apart. So the silvery cheek male here, he's the one that has that really large cast and it does serve a purpose. It's just a hollow piece on top of his beak there, but it does help support the larger beak that he has. And it also helps him prolong and really enhance those calls that he's gonna be making throughout the court. So that's even if you were on the other side of the zoo, if he's calling, you can hear it. Now, these guys are frugivorous, so that means they mainly eat fruit, uh, but they are also known, yeah, you like the fruit. <laughs> they are also known to eat other things such as insects and even lizards and frogs. Uh, in their natural habitat, one of their favorite things to eat are figs, but they are known to eat different fruits from many different trees. Uh, and most of their day is going to be spent flying very long distances, finding all those fruiting trees, finding that fruit but they can also be seen getting down on the ground, hopping around looking for food. It's really cute when you get to come back and visit. We do kind of scatter food on the ground sometimes. They'll get down there and hop around and it's really cute. Now, they're also monogamous. So that means they find one mate for their entire life. Both male and female, they are mated. They do form a very strong bond with each other. They do have a strong bond. They're often seen uh, these things eating or food items at times when they are eating. And they also share parental care when it comes to nesting. And hornbills in general have a very neat nesting technique that they do. So with these guys, they're gonna find a really high cavity up in a tall tree. And then the female's gonna go inside of that cavity and then they're gonna seal her inside. So they're gonna use different mud and dirt. She's gonna make these pellets that they're gonna stack up, create this wall so that she's completely sealed off with her chicks inside. And then they're just gonna leave a very tiny slit in the middle. Now that slit purpose is so that when he's out foraging throughout the day, he's gonna come back to the nest. His beak is gonna fit perfectly through that slit so that he can regurgitate his food back to that female. So as he's out foraging throughout the day, he has been known to go back to the nest 24 times every single day throughout the entire nesting process. And sometimes that can be up to 140 days. So he makes a huge commitment to taking care of the female and the chicks. Now, because of that certain technique that they use to nest and their dependence on the trees to find food and shelter, they do become threatened by things such as habitat loss and deforestation, but they are very good at adapting to many different environments and traveling those species to find those food and trees. So currently they are listed as a nature species, so that's really good. Now we did mention that they spend most of their day foraging looking for food, and that's pretty much the all of They spend a lot of their day looking for food, but that would be fun to say if we also need a little project in you guys. We have something set up over here with things that you can find in your own home that you can make and kind of do as a little activity if you're a little bored sitting at home today. So, come over to my wall space. We're going to make a little project. Don't worry, you can find other things if you even make your kids want to scavenge in the backyard. You can find things like pine cones, even just sticks. You can find any leaves, 
or even any type of thing from the backyard can be used to make a bird feeder for your back duck. So how we're going to do it today, how you can do it at home, is you can see I've started to smear some peanut butter on the tube. So it's just a thin layer of peanut butter just so you have enough so that something will stick to it. I hear some of you might be having a hard time hearing me, so I'm just going to talk a little bit about it. It might be because of the rain today, but hopefully maybe you guys are visual learners so you can just see what I'm doing as well. So we have some peanut butter stuck on there and I have some fun things. So this might be something you have at home as well. Um, cereal without really any added sugar to it. So plain Cheerios, maybe even some plain Tex Mix, so I have a bowl of that. Or you might even have some wild bird feed at home as well. So we have that and also some graham crackers. So just stick it in, we can get some on there. We can even make it fun. We can do some half and half. And pretty much if you go in your backyard, you can stick it on there, make sure it sticks on there pretty good. Get it all stuck so it doesn't just fall off. You can either stick this onto a branch or you can tie a string through it and tie it up on a branch in your backyard, even on the fence. So that's kind of an example of one right there. Or you can do something with your pine cone. This takes a little bit more time if you want the activity to take a little bit longer. Because the way you can do it is you stick the food into the peanut butter and then you have to find the spot on there so that it sticks in there. You can even do a piece of cram cracker. If it gets on your fingers, you just take a bite, you know, nobody's gonna know. You're at home by yourself. You take this little snack peanut butter, nobody's gonna know. You shove those pieces right in there. So you can just do something of that sort, or if you have enough peanut butter where the kids can just roll the pine cone through the peanut butter, shove it in some snacks, go out into your backyard, place it out there. And again, with any of these objects, just smear the peanut butter. It doesn't have to be too much, just enough to stick, stick items on. Same with the stick or any of these items. Add the treats, put in your backyard, and hopefully you'll have some new birdie friends visiting you soon. So I hope this activity brings you some fun in your home through these days. If you do make some, send us some pictures of it. We'd love to see what animals come and visit you in your backyard. And thank you guys so much for tuning in to Zoo 2. We will see you next time.